The tech world is feeling the effects of the Me Too movement. CES organizers this week, they added two female keynote speakers after it was heavily criticized for originally having an all-male panel or mantle. The tech industry has long struggled with sexism and harassment. One of the most troubled areas is in the video gaming industry. But Brianna Wu, a video game designer and key target in Gamergate, is taking steps to change that. She is running for Congress. A Gamergate, as you may recall, was an online hate movement in 2014. It threatened to murder or rape several women for simply being in the video game industry. Some targets had to flee their homes after their personal information was illegally put online. Now, let's hear more about her campaign from Brianna Wu. She joins us from Denham, Massachusetts via Skype. Brianna, thank you so much for joining us here on the program. Um, the Me Too movement you know, in the media sector, it, it's led to the downfall of Harvey Weinstein, the downfall of Matt Lauer and many others. But the Me Too movement, it, it's not working in the video game industry? No, we haven't really had a single man step down uh, in our field. We've had one media figure step down, but no one in a video game development house. And I can tell you, I'm very close friends with many women in the game industry. It's not because the guys behave well in my field. Yeah. You know, at the moment, a woman in my industry in journalism can break the silence, can speak up and be confident that she's going to be heard. But if a woman in the video games industry breaks her silence, does she still risk destroying her career even now? Well, I think you can look at what's happened to the careers of women that have spoken up. I could easily point to you to 10 or 15 women that have spoken up and they have found themselves targeted. Uh, you know, we had one woman that worked at Nintendo. She had everything her entire life. She had everything her entire life come through until they found something to get her fired. And she hasn't been back to the video game industry yet. So no, it's utterly rational, sadly, for women in the video game industry to choose to stay silent. And uh, we can change the status quo by changing policy. You're running for Congress. Tell us more about mm -hmm. your platform, especially in regards to empowering women in tech. Well, you know, I think this is one of these situations where I think that asking men to do the right thing in the tech industry isn't going to work. We need to be able to do the right thing ourselves. And, you know, for a multitude of reasons, women don't make it all the way up the chain in the video game industry. Uh, you know, there's no shortage of women getting into junior and intern positions. But when you look at where their career goes 10 years from there, you know, we're not really rising up the ranks. So, you know, if I'm elected to Congress, I certainly hope to serve on the technology subcommittee. And I want to hold hearings about, you know, hiring bias in the tech industry. I want to bring, you know, video game companies like Rockstar in front of Congress. And I want to look at why women aren't making it up the ranks. Yeah, absolutely. By putting more women in positions of power in the industry. Gamergate, um, it, again, that campaign of harassment it happened mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. It was widely reported in 2014. In the end, despite the activism and despite the press, it didn't lead to any change. Are, are you optimistic that you can bring about change in the, in the industry, not inside the industry, but in office, in Congress? Well, I think this is a really good example of why we need women in Congress. My strongest advocates uh, during Gamergate were women in Congress, including uh, Representative Catherine Clark. So, you know, if you want to get down to a really base, like, spreadsheet level, the issue with the FBI not responding to Gamergate was an issue of resources. Uh, the FBI doesn't really have the tools they need online to prosecute crimes. They don't have anyone whose specific job it is at the FBI to go investigate high profile you know, death threats. Um, so what I want to do is I want to put that in you know, our funding bills and I want to specifically create a uh, division of the FBI that will handle these kinds of crimes. Bravo, you mentioned the death threats and you know, yes. you were a high profile target of Gamergate. Oh. You were subjected to relentless <laughs> waves of yeah. abuse. Um, have the trolls come after you again um, since you announced your run for Congress? I mean, there's no good way to have a Law & Order episode made about you. So, <laughs> you know, it's it, it was exhausting. And it's still, it's it's so routine. You know, I was with my husband the other night. And we were doing a campaign event. And, you know, I got a call from someone saying he was going to murder me and rape me. And I just, I felt absolutely nothing. Uh, it's just numbness at this point. So... You know, I think the truth is we that have experienced this, we need to stand tall so the women coming up after us are not going to have to deal with this kind of harassment and abuse.
Brianna Wu, we thank you for your activism. We thank you for speaking out. And best of luck to you as you run for Congress. Brianna Wu joining us on from uh, Dedham, Massachusetts. Take care. And that.